I would like to introduce to you some great people who uh, I'm not very familiar with, but they do seem like some good people with some things to say. Uh, they did walk up and, you know, we just made a little extra time for them. Would y'all please come on up here? And uh, we'll just go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Uh, we're going to, you know, feel like these are pretty good people, so we're going to take the chance they have something uh, important to say. Uh, I, I want you to understand something here too that recently CPS has been in, is now in charge of the elderly so if you know you keep on letting these people get by with what they're doing they're now they're taking uh, they're getting they're going after our parents when they get old okay they get older they then they put them into nursing homes that you know in, in many cases there could be 10 people in one room I'll never forget the time when I worked for ambulance service and I picked up a tuberculosis patient that wasn't quarantined and had over 10 people in the room so I want you to understand, this was about, uh, I don't know, I guess about 10 years ago, so I can imagine how far it's progressed to. Anyways, we got these people here, and I'd like for them to speak. Can we hear that? Is that it? How are we doing? Oh, right Is that okay? Right up close? Okay. Uh, hello. Okay. Right. My mother is Virginia Maker and I'm Bill Maker. My father's name was Art Maker and I'm the son of Art. That was what I always used to say. So we came here from New York yesterday because we heard that yesterday, July 17th, was International Justice Day. And we came here because we're Americans and Americans believe in justice. And we believe in democracy. Is that right, Mother? That's right. Okay, so here's the point. We have had, in the last four years, we've been in courts, four different courts in New York State. My father lost his mind and his health, passed away two years ago at 94 years of age. At 92, he was misled about my mother and myself, and we were brought into the courts under guardianship proceedings. The guardianship was brought by an estranged son who had not been close to my father in 60 years and was never in my father's will. Right, mother? That's right. So, here's the point. To you, that sounds pretty obvious, what happened, I'm sure, anybody. All of our friends, everyone we knew, everybody knew that something was wrong. But it didn't matter in New York courts. What we had is my father under oath said that I had stolen $5 million that didn't exist. Imagine a 92-year-old man, a quadriplegic, laying there, can't lift his own food, can't lift a spoon to his mouth. He says he has $5 million that his son must have taken. Well, the lawyers ate that up. The judge ate it up. Four more judges ate it up, a dozen lawyers all together. All together, the, the amount of the estate of assets from the sale of all my mother and father's ownings came to $407,000. $400,000. Can you imagine saving $400,000? They had about a million and a half if everything had been sold correctly. Well, that's what the lawyers loved. So in the end, they sold my mother's home they sold off all their assets, and here we are now, four years later, talking with you. By the way, I was a veteran. I'm a veteran of the Vietnam era. I made a half million toys that were sold here in the Smithsonian Institution. They are my best customer. I'm here today with a new one for them. I had a partnership with NASA. NASA, that's the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. I made two educational CDs for schools for them. And now I have 10 orders of protection written against me as if I was a bad guy, as if I was a wife abuser, 
is if I took advantage of my parents when I stopped everything in my world for three years to take care of my parents. That's what we have in our judicial system. As a result of that, the lawyers are fat and happy, and let me tell you, they're all buddies. They're all keeping together. So our only recourse, as we see it, at least as I see it, is to be here. So my mother and I have instead joined NASGA instead of NASA. NASCA is the National Association Against Guardianship Abuse. Yeah. And what's the interesting part about that, it's hard to get this picture, but the picture is, is that, that there is a need for guardians. There is a need for guardianship. But what it is is hugely profitable for the lawyers and anyone who abuses the system. And they all work together. And what amazes me is when I've met Deb and other people through this, through NASGA, through the internet, through the connection to the world, is that we were not alone. We thought we were alone. We thought we were the only ones they were doing this to. In the end, we find out, my God, they're all over the place. There are all sorts of states this is happening in. It's all over the country, and the, the amazing thing is, all these different states, they have different court names, different laws, different rules, and yet they're doing the same thing. They've got the same system of protocol. They've got the same way of accusing and letting you off. They make you feel like, gee, I better get away from this quick while, they've, uh, while I'm only blamed for doing this. So you run away and you go back to your work and you hope that everything's gonna be right, but it's not right. And so anyway, what I'm saying is this is happening all over the country. It's the same system, and there's nobody over the top watching to see what happens. And there's nobody making it right. And we need fairness in the courts. We need the courts, we need the laws. We, don't, we do need new laws, but what we have is we do have laws that are appropriate. Some of them, but they're not being followed. They push those laws off to the side like they don't even exist. And what amazes me is the hearing you clap, you know what that says? It says we're not alone. They're doing it all over the place. It's unbelievable. And by the way, my mother and I took a trip here. We're gonna, we had a nice dinner last night. We had a nice day in a hotel. Tomorrow we're going to fall or falling water up in Ohio, or is it Pennsylvania? And the whole trip for two days, two people, is gonna cost less than one hour to one of the crooked lawyers for 250 bucks an hour. $400,000 later and a million in losses. So guess what, I know what I'm doing right now is gonna get some action against me, but guess what? I do have evidence, and if anybody wants to see the evidence, it's gonna be on fightorrun.com, fight or run. Yeah, well, okay. So anyway, fightorrun.com is where I'm gonna put up my stuff. It'll be there next week. And mother, have you been fa treated fairly in the courts? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Oh, 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 that's... Did you get justice in the courts? It all depends what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. He was a little nervous being up front. Speak in the mic. Okay, okay. Well, Mom was a little nervous. But anyway, she knows what's happening. She knows all this. About what? Her house got sold to be torn down. My father died. My father died two days after I told him that his house may be torn down. They sold the house in order to to sell it to uh, people who wanted to tear it down. The court, we tried to buy it twice. We had a reverse mortgage. Yes, yes, we do have a reverse mortgage. That's right, anyway, we had all, everything was set up. The court even wrote an order that she should get her house. And then they, behind our backs, they killed the deal three times. And we have evidence of that. And that's what'll be up on the website. And believe me, they're gonna be watching, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Fightorrun.com. Fight or run. And Nazca. Okay.